Hello and welcome to YouTube. Today I want to show you my latest build. This is a Acid Retaliation Grasping Wines Archon, which well not only focuses on Grasping Wines but also on Aegis of Men here and the Oller Relic um, Viral Cascade. So, first of all, as always, let's start off with the skill allocation, right? So, we are a Shaman and an Oathkeeper, which makes an Archon, and our main ability here from Shaman is Grasping Wines, or rather, Entangling Wines actually. And we're using this for its rata, which means retaliation damage added to attack. In this case, it's 9% on the base, and then some additional rata from the shield here, the Bramble Vine, 5% here. The other two skills we use from the Shaman are the Mogirogan pack line, one point here, soft cap on Heart of the Wild, and then hard cap on Oxgun for the pierce resistance, aether resistance, and bonus retaliation damage. And the second one, or like the third ability, is Wendigo Totem. And this one is at a soft cap at 12 out of 12. Gives me for like 5% plus 500 with each tick. And then we have Blood Pact just as a one pointer to give us 5% love steal um, as long as we stay inside this aura. Right? And that's already it for Shaman. The second mastery for this build is the Oathkeeper. Um, as you can see, Oathkeeper is really good for almost any acid retaliation build. Um, because of that, I almost picked up every single ability of, from Oathkeeper here. Starting up with the safeguard ability, just a one pointer here for some flat armor, and yeah, other than that, it's really not that great. Um, Agus of Men here. No, this is a very good ability, very great ability for any acid retaliation damage build that has a shield as well. Agus of Thorns giving you 18% rata with just one point and also converting fire damage to acid. And Reprisal at 14 out of 12 here giving me 21% rata on top. Um, this is just a 1-pointer, and these are 2 points, giving me plus 3 targets from Avenging Shield, so yeah, pretty nice as well here. Uh, next up we got Righteous Fervor, which um, is pretty nice for Retribution, and Retribution is like a default attacker that also has lots of retaliation damage added to attack, as you can see, 12% here on every single default attack. And these two are just 1-pointers, this is just giving you some DA and attack speed and armor, this one's pretty nice actually, kind of like the... Um, Tenacity of the Boar, proc from Shaman's Surgery, right? And yeah, this is whatever. Presence of Virtue, this is very, a very good um, aura that every Oathkeeper should use. And in this case, we're also overcapping it because it also gives us, gives us physical damage retaliation, which on most cases will be converted to acid fully. And also gives us lots of offensive ability, as you can see. Um, Haven at 6 out of 10. 6 out of 10 is pretty nice for a shield user, pretty nice sweet spot here. 14% HP, 8% shield damage blocked, I mean uh, shield block chance, and 21% shield damage blocked additional, right? That is pretty nice, and yeah, 6 out of 10 is like, I would say, the sweet spot here for this build. And then we got Rebuke at 7 out of 10. Now, this is an ability I would like to put some more points into. Um, 7 out of 10 was more like, um, this was kind of my last priority out of all the other abilities that I had, and I wanted to like put as many points here as I could. Um, it ended up being 7 out of 10 points here, so yeah, that's not too great, but it's not bad either, it's okay-ish, I would say. And Resilience, 5 out of 12, this is probably the sweet spot that you want on any Oathkeeper for Resilience, right? 5 out of 12 is really, really nice. You can go for 11 out of 12 if you have like lots of points to spare. This build doesn't, so yeah, 5 out of 12 is where it's at, and it's really good, really nice uh, defensive proc here. Ascension has a uh, huge damage absorption and fire retaliation, and also percent retaliation damage, so we just hard cap this as high as possible, giving us 15 out of 12 points here. Uh, clarity of purpose, either you one pawn this or you soft cap it, right? Or somewhere in between. Um, never ever overcap this, it's never worth it. Um, this build kind of lacks offensive ability, so I did choose to soft cap this to get the 15% offensive ability here. And yeah, I think for this build it's pretty nice like this. Next up we got um, the Virus Might. Virus Might is just my defensive disengage ability here. Um, one point here, one point here, just for the well, ability itself on this one for the increased range. And also for um, decreased cooldown, so it's pretty nice as well. Um, Judgment is really nice for Crushing Verdict, right? This one reduces enemy defensive ability by 263 in this case. 
um, further like improving my bad offensive ability, right? And also Heart of Wrath, which is like an an aura that is around you after um, using Judgment, at least for three seconds here. Um, this also has retaliation damage added to attack, so it's pretty nice. And also the fire damage gets converted to acid anyway. Um, I like it a lot. It's also pretty nice for proccing stuff. Um, yeah, just a one pointer here for eight percent rat health. Pretty decent, I would say. Next up, we got the Guardians of Empyrean. This is just a one pointer, and then we are using them mainly for Celestial Presence and their conversion. Right, Sign of the Reek not on, not only converts the physical and the fire damage to vitality slash acid. But it also actually converts the resistance reduction here. So this will have 33% poison and acid resistance reduction on 15 out of 12 points. And yeah, that's what we want, right? And last but not least, we have the exclusive skill, Path of the Three. Now this one is pretty nice for any acid slash poison Oathkeeper. And it has flat poison damage, converts physical to acid and 50% fire to acid at 17 out of 12. And also has 30% CR, so it's a really nice exclusive comparable to Star Pact from the Arcanist tree, and yeah, just great. Next up we got the Devotions. Um, for Devotions, I went with like my personal um, um, well, standard kind of already, um, of not using a tier 3 Devotion on Retaliation builds. I know that um, Stoneform is really good actually, and you can go for Stoneform as well, even on this build. This would be like another version to make the Devotions. I chose to just take Phoenix instead, and um, obviously you want Rumor for the resistance, resistance reduction, this is like a must-have. And then um, Fetid Pool is really nice here as well. It's really nice for like Acid Retaliation. Um, characters actually, and also I chose to go for Trample and uh, Uzal's Decree here. These have physical damage retaliation, which will be partially converted on any other ability except for Grasping Ones, but in Grasping Ones we will actually have full physical to acid conversion as well. So all these like physical damage um, bonuses here will be converted to acid as well, on Grasping Ones at least, and on the others like partially. Uh, same thing for Shield Wall, right? this will give you us, like 615 fist damage retail here. Um, yeah, it's pretty nice overall. Also, the fire fire retaliation is even better for us, right? For example, from Messenger of War, with fire retail here, fire retail there, fire retail here actually as well, and also on the proc. And this will have 100% conversion for all of my abilities, because I am using Path of 3 to convert like 50% of the fire to acid. And then also a belt that converts the remaining 50% fire to acid as well. Also this one has burn retaliation, which will be converted to poison retail. And yeah, those are basically the devotions. I also have the shield maiden, just for like some other retaliation damage actually, and also shield bonuses as I am using a shield. And for healing, I chose to go for dried. I kinda like dried now. I think it's still maybe a little bit weak. And it could like maybe, it should maybe like get another small buff, but it's pretty nice now for, um, I'm using it on my, on my Targo Warlord as well, right? And it's pretty nice for builds that don't have um, any means of like l proper lifesteal. I mean this build kind of has some lifesteal, it's not like the greatest ever. And it, it can be like a nice alternative to Giant's Blood if you need yellow devotions anyway for, in this case, for example, for Targo the Builder, right? And yeah, it's pretty nice. And also, on top of that, I really like it for lots of soldiers and oath keepers that have problems with spirit requirements for jewelry, for example. This note here has 4% fizz res, 5% spirit, and also reduces spirit requirements for weapons and jewelry by 10%. And in this case, we are using the Judgment of a 3 Scepter, which needs like 495 spirit usually. And uh, this will be reduced down, down by 10% down by to 446. And that's why I'm like fine with just 447 spirit here. And I don't need to put more points in the spirit actually. Now let me also show you how to make these devotions, right? Um, I'm gonna bring up Grim Tools for that and show you how to make these devotions. So first of all, the first devotion I will always aim for is Rumor. Um, even on this retaliation build. I mean... 
you don't really know whether or not you're gonna level as retaliation, right? And if you're not releveling really as retaliation, then all the retaliation devotions are kinda not that great. But rumor is always great as long as you play as a poison or slash acid character, right? Um, so first of all, we should try to get the rumor devotion, and for that, I will take um, either Elo or Sailor's Guide. Um, when you're leveling with Locust Set, I would actually say that Elo is better. If you're not leveling with Locust Set, then Sailor's Guide is probably better. And now we also need yellows, I mean greens and reds, right? So for the greens, probably um, suggest you to always go for Spider. And you can also take this one out again. And then for the reds, well, Jackal is really great, right? You can also take the Ghoul for leveling if you prefer that, but you don't need to use it for this build. So, yeah, you're fine using just Jackal. And next, you want to go for the Phoenix, Affliction, etc. So, um, we want some yellows first, right? And for yellows, well, early on you can, for example, choose just a Lion, or, for example, a Turtle if you want like some more defensive stuff. So, for now, let's just take the Lion here and uh, get the phoenix. Um, when you're at this stage though, you can already get dried, right? I mean, you could also get dried instead of lion actually in the first place, right? Um, this way you can like start leveling dried. Um, yeah, you should probably take dried over lion. Yeah, next up we need purple for affliction, ozard, and autumn boar, right? So, for purple devotions, Let's just take the Wolverine for now. This will solve like all of our purple problems, right? This also has like pretty nice offense, uh, defensive ability. What you could also go for instead of the Wolverine would be the Empty Throne. This has resistances and is honestly probably better for leveling because it does fix or like help you fix resistances while leveling. And now that we've got the 8 purple, we can go for the Ulzad, we can go for the Autumn Boar, right? And also for Affliction. Now we actually don't have any points left. Um, you can take out some points here after finishing Ulzad. You can also take out points from Spider after finishing Ulzad because we don't need that many yellows anymore. And after finishing the Boar, you can also take out the Empty Throne again. Next up we need uh, the Messenger of War. And for that, as you can see in my endgame setup, I had the Shield Maiden. So if you're leveling with a shield, feel free to go for the Shield Maiden right now. Um, if not, then maybe take something else, like Panther is always pretty nice. Um, yeah, even Scarab or Stag can be fine as well. And now we go for the Messenger of War. Um, notice that I need more points here though, so we need to fix this problem first. How do we fix this problem? Um, for example, well, taking out the jackal probably, right? Yeah, you don't need the jackal if you have the point here and have like these other devotions like rumor, for example. You only need three reds for rumor, so it's fine like this. Now we have the messenger of war. You can take out the red um, crossroads here, and we have almost everything we want. We have 6 points left, because we can't take out the yellow, and use the Targo Devotion instead. It is kind of hard to say which node is better here, this node or that node. Um, both are pretty great, but since we're like not converting all physical damage to acid on like every ability, I would probably tend towards this node actually. But this one has the percent armor, so both are really good. Doesn't really matter which one you choose too much. Both are nice. Yeah, this is how you make these devotions happen. Next up, let's check out the gear of this character. I am using 3-piece Judgment of a 3 set and also the Bramblevine shield here, as you can see. Now this Bramblevine shield is like the core of the build for Grasping Wines, Retaliation, and 3-piece Shoulder Guard of the 3 and Chest and Judgment of a 3. Um, have a pretty nice 3-piece set bonus, as you can see. It's lots of acid retaliation. And also 16% physical rest. So 3 piece bonus is actually pretty insane. And um, that's like the main reason we are using this. Also the chest has like another proc called Edridge Blast. 15% chance when hit. With another retaliation proc. That's pretty nice as well. And uh, yeah, it's like just insane retaliation damage for acid bolts. For the headpiece we are using Caligadra's Visage. 
Um, this one is really great, um, but if you don't have, like, if you weren't able to kill Kalagadra yet, you can also use, for example, a Ravager Psalm. If you don't, if you don't kill Ravager yet, though, you can just use any retaliation based or like plus one all skills helmet here as well. For example, Oculoth's Visage. Um, a helmet that looks very similar to this that drops from the Messenger and Act 7. It's also probably not too bad. For the Amulet we have Mythical Pestilence of Drieg. Now, there are two different ones you can go for here, definitely. Um, this one is pretty nice, but if you want to focus even more on Grasping Wands, there's also a Conduit that has like bonus duration for Grasping Wands, and because of that you can stack like more Grasping Wands on top of each other than I can with this build. And that one is... When it, get, like, when it comes to Grasping Wands itself, it's definitely better than this one. Um, overall, for Asset Retail, this one is really good as well, so... Yeah, also, I didn't really want to, um, like, craft multiple of these or the condos. As you can see, this one is also pretty bad when it comes to ro the roll, at least. Um, there are some that have acid, re acid resistance reduction on the proc. This one also has, only has physical resistance reduction on the proc. So, yeah, that's not ideal. And I would like to either craft some more of this or some more of the condo instead to grab one of those instead. This one is like, it's good, but it's more like a filler right now for me. Um, the rings though, I have double creeping rings here, one thunder strike of readiness and one resistant of attack. Now these are really good for offensive and defensive ability and also have lots of acid retaliation and bonuses to retribution. You don't have to use these rings though, you can also use um, open hand and closed fist. Those are really great as well and are probably performing better in crucible for grasping wands. Um, but these are well, pretty nice if you have them as well, for like, single target and uh, fixing your resistances and offensive and defensive ability as well. But they're not necessary, like, they're not mandatory. Um, for gloves, I'm using Mythical Handguards of Perdition for plus two to the path of a three, giving me more conversion from fire to acid and also CDR. And also has flat acid retaliation, elemental resistance, increased armor and stun resistance. But they're pretty nice. And for the boots, I chose Mythical Vice Scoring Greaves now. They do give me plus 2 entangling wands, putting entangling wands up to 15 points, giving me 9% retail, like Rata, 2 entangling wands. And they're pretty nice as well for any S retaliation build, but in this case, they're actually even better than these here. Mythical Stone Traders, I was using these before. They're nice as well. But yeah, using these instead would drop my. Tangly once down to 13 and thus only down to 8% rata and these helped me push that up to 9% rata. Got the medal, we got the Mythical Serenir's Commendation and this one's pretty nice, has lots of fire retaliation damage which gets which gets converted to acid again. Um, you can use this one, it's pretty nice, or you can also use the Mythical Mark of the Forbidden. This one over here. And this one also has the Toxic Gas Cloud which has fumble and impaired aim to enemies, and also flat acid retaliation. This one is uh, an option as well, it's pretty nice as well. Um, I think overall the Serenir's Commendation is better overall, but feel free to use whichever you prefer. Next we got the belt, the Mythical Murmur's Kiss. This one converts fire to acid as well, so together with Path of the Three exclusive ability, this will give my build 100% fire to acid retaliation uh, conversion. Like, not only normal fire damage, but also retaliation damage, right? Um, note that this conversion only applies towards retaliation damage added to attack, and not like the normal retaliation damage that applies whenever you get hit. Um, that said, it's still really, really good to have this type of conversion on your retaliation builds as well. Uh, next up, we have the Honor Relic. This one is also, like, one of two options. You can also go for the Absolution Relic or Serenity. Serenity being like the overall kind of boring but defensive choice. Um, Absolution is like a little bit more defensive than Honor but more offensive than Serenity. And Honor is probably the most offensive one out of the three. And this one also gives you the Viral Cascade ability. This one over here. 
which has five projectiles each with 25% retaliation damage added to attack, so you can deal like a total of 125 damage, like retaliation damage added to attack, right? If you shotgun an enemy like right in front of you. But that's pretty nice as well. <laughs> um, it's a lot of fun actually. Mythical Thorn Guy, Thornhide Legards. These are used for their physical retaliation damage, percent or retail damage, and also Oak Skin and Retribution. And also the Thornhide proc is pretty nice as well. Um, yeah, they're all probably the best pants for any kind of flat damage retaliation. So either flat physical, flat fire, flat acid, right? When you're not playing, say, a poison retaliation build. These are like the pants that you want to go for, right? And that's also gonna be it for the... Items, right? <laughs> uh, let me show you the build a little bit in action here. Let's first summon the Guardians here. And start up with some dummy kill time here, right? As you can see, there are like lots of buttons to press on this build, and also NLG can sometimes be a problem. I mean, you do have to use energy potions. There should not be like a timing where you have um, where you're like out of energy, but yeah. Anyways, 30 seconds um, kill time, about right? That was just kind of decent for a retaliation character. Retaliation characters aren't the best at killing dummies, right? Um, so yeah, what I was, was gonna say, like, there's not gonna be a time where you have no energy potion ready to use while uh, being out of energy, usually. So energy overall is kind of fine, I would say. If you prefer to have more energy, you can also go for an arcane spark on your metal instead of the blazing ruby. This way you would have more energy regen as well. Like more energy leech, rather. Uh, let's take the build for a small cruise through the bog here. Uh, we got a bar of gold here, for example. That's pretty quickly as well. Alright, I actually didn't kill Krawali yet on this character, so let's try this here. Yeah, pretty easy, but maybe not the fastest kill. He doesn't really activate your like default retaliation damage too much though. So it's kinda expected to be a little bit slower against that type of enemy, right? Alright, let's check out the grove here. So we are shattered and afflicted. That's kinda not that great. <laughs> Alright, see against Slurt Zar here. This is kinda not the best fight for this character, because um, Slurt Zar is highly resistant to acid damage. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty slow cooldown actually here. Yeah. Especially with the Shattered Mutator, as you can see, it's pretty darn slow. It did have a stone face of attack, though. Interesting. What? What? Ozuin's flame spreader from like a stump. 
pretty nice. I mean, that's why you should always check these out. Yeah. <laughs> We gotta kill the crab. Alright, insert why are you running joke here, right? Also, if you've never been to Ancient Grove before, check out this area over here. There's always some nice loot there if you go there the first time. Alright, Gargaball time. Now, against Gargaball, I wanna try to. Well, save Ascension for stage 2, right? Also, try to have a grasping one stacked up in advance. And yeah, he actually dies super fast on this character, it's kinda crazy. I mean, he does trigger my retaliation with like all of his many attacks as well. So this character is really nice at killing Dagger Ball. Like actually, Sloth Czar is more of a challenge for this character than Gargoyle Ball is. And of course, we should also check out the new Tomb of the Heretic dungeon, right? This one's gonna be pretty nice. I still haven't found all the Magi's rings, so yeah. hopefully we'll get some luck here. We'll see. I also, I would like better mutators than on the Ancient Grove, right? The Shattering Mutator is just so bad. Pretty unlucky. Alright, the door has been opened. Alright, we got the Magi's here. Let's see what we got here. Shuroth and Zephyrus, alright. We gotta kill Zephyrus first, alright. Zephyrus is like the monk as dude, but has his physical hitting. Things from above, right? He doesn't really cast them now, though. What's wrong with them? There they are, but... He casted them, like, super late, what the... <laughs> Interesting. We got a Seed of Zephyrus, at least. Not the purple one, but at least the blue one. Uh, I'm not complaining, that's okay. Also, maybe I should show you the Seed of Zephyrus, right? This one. It is actually a retaliation damage based ring around or like physical and retaliation damage based one I mean I guess you can also play the bird I'm playing right now with like double purple Zephyrus ring blue one doesn't seem that worth it but the purple one might be worth it yeah. alright you can always take this Death room a little bit slower by cutting the spawning signs of famine first, right? Before going to the chest here. This should this build should be like able to take them all on at once pretty easily. Also, um, keep an eye out for any arcane mob spawning here. Cut them with like the first priority. Also, the vendor here in this dungeon is really nice. He always sells your purple nut. You should always make sure to buy that one. Double sign of hunger, nice. Those are the like kind of um, counters you want here. Right? No items though. Alright, we got Morgoneth himself here. Let's see how this goes. And also let's hope he doesn't spawn the Zephyrus guy. No, this is Busty. We can ignore him. It's fine. His damage reduction was pretty annoying, to be honest. But other than that, he's also a... Yeah, kind of an easy boss, actually. Memories of Morgan Earth. But it was actually new for me. Interesting. At least new on this character, I believe. Yeah. 
Interesting. Alright, last but not least, let's also check out the, the Lokar dungeon and also Lokar himself. We won though, Lokar. Um, it's not necessarily the easiest to kill on this character. Like, the build is not that good to like face tank Lokar. Um, you can like face tank him with Ascension, but once your Ascension is down, it's. Uh, he kinda deals too much. Um, like shotgun damage, and because of that, um, you have to like cut around a bit, which is not a problem at all with this build. Right? You still have your Agus of Men here, you have your Grasping Wines, lots of your abilities are ranged as well, so you don't have to face tank people. So, if you're farming the Dark Bond set, you should kill all four of these guys because each of them drops one of the Dark Bond sets. Right? Oh, here is number four. Right at the end of the dungeon. Yeah, Dark Bond's metal, nice. It's always nice when the last boy. The last guy drops his, um, his mantle on it. The other ones, you're gonna f fight them probably a lot anyway whenever you farm Lokar. But uh, the last one, you don't, you kinda don't want to go back to the last one that often. It's kind of a journey to go all the way back there. You will die here? I mean, yeah, you will probably, Lokar, not me. Alright, let's hope he doesn't have a Wonka Samur or something like that and try to kill him. Right, so we can wait a little bit with our ascension until he like, drops us down a bit and then use the ascension here. And try to burst him as much as possible during ascension. Once ascension is down though, we have to be like, super careful. Use like a pot. And I'm probably cut around a bit, yeah, yeah, as you can see, this gets a little bit sketchy sometimes. Once Ascension is back up though, you can go back to face thinking. As long as you have your Ascension up at least. And after that, back to kiting a bit, use your Grasping Wands, your uh, Sheet Throw ability as well until Ascension is up again. And now we can just face tank him again. There we go. So yeah, as I said, the Lokar kill is not the smoothest on this character at all, because uh, Lokar also, not, also does not trigger your ret retaliation. He doesn't use the weapon to actually attack you, he only uses it to like slam the ground and spawn those uh, projectiles similar to this one, right? Um, but in red, I would like to have his projectiles to look like way cooler than this one. Um, but yeah, just kite around a bit whenever you have your ascension down, and it should still be fine. Um, yeah, that's gonna be the end of this video for this character, for this build highlight video. Um, check out the other videos about this character, why I, for example, kill other Celestials, do Shadow Realm, etc. Because this character has a lot of potential and he can do almost all content in the game, I would say. And maybe even all the content if you like tweak him around correctly for like specific enemies. It's a really nice build. I hope you enjoy this one. And thank you so much everybody for watching and I hope to see you around on the next videos as well.